Antilius stood alone, his Terminator armor creaking and whirring as he moved his massive frame through the cramped corridors of the Space Hulk. His Storm Bolter was at the ready, its dual barrels smoking from the last volley of fire he had unleashed. The Tyranids had come in waves, their chittering and screeching echoing through the metal halls. He had been fighting the Tyranids for days, ever since his strike cruiser had been pulled into the gravity well of the Hulk. He had watched as his squadmates fell one by one, their screams of agony drowned out by the endless hissing of the alien horde. Antilius was no ordinary space marine. He was a veteran of the Tyrannic Wars, and this was not his first time fighting the beasts. He had faced down horrors beyond imagining for over three hundred standard years, and he had emerged victorious every time. The Tyranids were the perfect enemy, however. They were an endless tide of razor-sharp claws and teeth, their exoskeletons impervious to all but the most devastating weaponry. He knew that his storm bolter, while effective, was limited by his ammunition, but he pressed on nonetheless— as he rounded a corner, he heard a familiar sound, the thunderous footsteps of a tyrannid hive tyrant. The creature was massive, easily twice his height, and covered in chitinous plates that gleamed with moisture in the dim light. He raised his bolter and fired, the explosive rounds slamming into the hive tyrant's armoured hide. The creature roared in fury, its scything talons lashing out at him. He dodged at the last second, his ancient armour buzzing with power as it tried to keep up with his superhuman speed. The hive tyrant closed in, its massive bulk crashing into him with bone-jarring force. He grunted in pain, but he held his ground, unleashing a torrent of fire from his bolter between the tyrant's chitin. The tyrant was relentless, its massive claws tearing into his armour. Antilius felt something pierce his flesh as his display flashed in red, alerting him of the breach. He grabbed his chainsword that was mag-locked to his hilt and spun it around, the whirring blades tearing into the hive tyrant's flesh as he wedged it between its hardened plates. He felt his armor buckling under the strain, alarms continuing to blare warnings that his structural integrity was failing. But he was not one to give up easily. Fueled by his hatred, he fought the tyrant and refused to give in to the monster. He parried the creature's talons, his chains hood sparking as it made contact in the dim light. Finally, after what seemed like hours, Antilius saw his opening. The hive tyrant had made a fatal mistake, leaving itself open to attack. With a roar of fury, he plunged his chainsword into the creature's chest, carving a deep wound that sent it stumbling backwards. Antilius pressed his advantage, unleashing a flurry of blows that sent the hive tyrant reeling. The creature hissed and screeched in fury, but he was undeterred. He knew that he had to finish the fight quickly before the hive tyrant could rally. With a deafening roar, he delivered the finishing blow to the hive tyrant. The chainsword's teeth tore through the creature's flesh and chitin, sending a shower of blood and gore spraying in all directions. His vision momentarily blocked by the spray of blood onto his helm before being swept away automatically. The hive tyrant's massive body convulsed and twitched, its limbs thrashing wildly as it fought for one last breath. He stood back, breathing heavily, his eyes fixed on the writhing form of the creature he had just slain. The tyranids around him hissed and screeched in fury, their eyes fixed on the fallen hive tyrant. They knew that their leader had been slain, and they were filled with a primal rage. But he was undeterred. He knew that the battle was not yet over, that there were still countless tyrannids to be fought and defeated. He raised his chains hoard high, its teeth still dripping with the blood of his fallen foe. The rest of the tyrannids closed in, their claws and talons at the ready. He braced himself, ready to face down the horde once more. He knew that he was outnumbered, that the odds were against him. But he also knew that he was an Astartes, an angel of the Emperor, and that he would fight— until he died a glorious death. And so, with a mighty cry, Antilius charged into the fray, the weight of his tactical dreadnought armor behind him. The Tyranids lunged at him, their claws and teeth slashing through the air. For hours he fought, his body aching, his muscles burning with fatigue. In the end, his determination and skill proved too much for them. One by one they fell before him, their lifeless bodies piling up around him like so much detritus. When it was finally over, when the last Tyranid had fallen, he stood alone amidst the carnage. His armor was battered and torn, with deep gouges and gashes revealing the intricate mechanisms and servos within, his weapons stained with blood and gore, the blades and teeth of his chainsaw dull from constant use. 
But he was alive, and he had emerged victorious. He had faced down the greatest threat he had ever known, and again he had emerged triumphant. But despite the state of his equipment, he felt a sense of pride welling up within him. He had faced down the mightiest of foes, had stood firm against wave after wave of tyrannid assaults. He had watched as his comrades fell around him, had felt the warm embrace of death tighten around his heart, but had refused to yield. He had fought on, driven by an unshakable faith in the Emperor and his own strength and skill as a warrior. And now, as he stood amidst the carnage, Antilius felt a sense of awe and wonder wash over him. He had never felt more alive, more invigorated than he did in that moment. With a sense of deep gratitude and reverence, he bowed his head in prayer to the Emperor. He thanked the God-Emperor for his strength and guidance, for the skills and knowledge that had allowed him to emerge victorious, and he promised to continue to serve the Imperium, to fight on against all who would threaten its existence. As Antilius finished his prayer, he felt a sudden buzz in his ear. He tapped his comlink, and a familiar voice crackled to life. Antilius, this is Captain Arcturus. We have a Thunderhawk inbound to your location, but we bring grave tidings. The Tyranids have returned. Where is Brother Zephyrion or Valta? With the Emperor, Captain. I see, responded Captain Arcturus. Their sacrifice will not be in vain, then. The Tyranids are hitting us hard. We need you back on board the Blade Warden now, Lieutenant. Uh, understood. Without hesitation, he sprang into action. He checked his weapons, loading his last clip of his bolter, and made his way to his transport. He gritted his teeth, knowing that the fate of his brothers rested on his shoulders, and with a sense of fierce determination, he vowed to hold back the Xenos no matter what the cost. For he was a space marine, and he shall know no fear.'